vores fiskerejse efter den store hvide stør føres til det sydvestlige hjørne af Kanada. Her i British Columbia har denne stør i millioner af år levet i den mægtige Fraser River. Det er et kolossalt stort vandsystem, der udmunder i Stillehavet. Støren lever både i havet og i elven. Vi skal fiske nær byen Chilliwack, hvorfra vi i hurtige både nemt kommer ud til alle de bedste fiskepladser. Dette område er også kendt for at være et af de mest naturskønne områder i hele Kanada, og efter blot nogle få minutter sejlads, føler man sig langt ude i vildmarken. Vi er ombord hos og skal være sammen med en af de mest erfarne lystfiskere i Fraser River, Fred Helmer. So when when did you find out that you could fish for these uh, amazing prehistorical animals? Well, I was very lucky. I grew up with my grandfather and my father who spent a lot of time on the Fraser and one of the things that they fished for was sturgeon. And uh, back then they used to catch sturgeon with rod and reel and uh, what they did with them is they used to take them into Vancouver and sell them. Yeah. Uh, sturgeon weren't even considered a game fish at that point. But over time we learned a lot about fish, we caught a lot of them. Some of them over uh, 12 feet, like 900 pound fish. And, unbelievable. Uh, they are unbelievable. But we started to realize that those fish were very important to the future of the fishery. And uh, it is now a catch and release fishery. And I'm very proud to say that we were quite instrumental in making that happen. So nowadays the sturgeon are protected. You're not allowed to kill them or eat them. You have to put every fish back that you catch. Absolutely. Everything is catch and release and has been now for going on it's close to 12 years now. Det er med stor spænding og mange forhåbninger, at vi sejler ned af Fraser River for at prøve de første fiskepladser. Sammen med et par andre bådteam har vi ankret båden på omkring 6 meter vand. Alt den nødvendige grej er ombord. Et simpelt glidetakle med enkelt krog og kraftigt 30-50 pounds udstyr. Som avn benyttes lakserogen, der pakkes i en strømpe, så de får form som en valgnød stor kugle. Det lugter altså ikke specielt meget. For min næse er det helt duftfrit. Men uh, støderen har vel haft ganske bra lugt senere. Kuglen med lakserogen hægtes let på enkeltkrogen, og taklet kastes blot 10-20 meter ud bag båden. Der fiskes med to til fire stænger, og stangen placeres altid i en stangholder. You know, you don't want to rush the bite, because on a big fish, you want to wait till he's got it in his mouth, so you hook him in the lips, and not hook him, you know, real light. We want a nice, good hook set. So we wait until the rod's pulling really nice, and then one good set is ideal. They're quite soft in the mouths, aren't they? Actually, they uh, they have leathery. no they have no teeth. They're very leathery, yeah, yeah. and it is hard to get the hook through. So you got to give them a real good pump to get the hook through. Put your thumb on the reel here like that. Hang on to it, and then when he starts pulling. One straight puck set back. That's it. How's the clutch uh, set now? It's set actually quite tight. I can barely pull off. And the reason we do that is these things are they're big, strong fish. You can't really. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Here you go, Kim. Somebody. Okay. Grab yeah, onto it. He's there. Put your thumb on the reel. Oh. Okay. Just wait. Okay. When he pulls down, really good. Okay, next time you pull, okay. Now, you feel him? It's a little fish. I think we missed him. Okay. If you hook them, they usually go that way, but if they come at you, make sure you'll wind. Whatever. What about when they jump? <coughs> Is it a good chance that they will spit out the hook then? No, just keep the line tight. It's not like tarpon fishing no where, you, where you drop. Line. We're, on, we're running a 130 pound test line, so if they land on just the line, it's it, not going to break. Keep it tight. Keep it tight, yeah. and it's important. 
Are you... there any, any other special techniques when you play these uh, this uh, monster fish? I mean, if you hook a big big sturgeon. Uh, well, I mean, these things when you hook them, they're very powerful fish. So yeah. They'll pretty much do whatever they want. They so are in control. They are, yeah, especially on the on the beginning. Big, big difference in in the size of the fish. You can get all sizes here, from from the really small ones to the the, the big big mothers. Yeah, and and you know that just kind of gives you an indication of the status of the health yes, of this yes, river yes. is that when we get a bite, we're getting another bite here, okay, okay. pick that rod up, okay, put your thumb on it, he's pulling, he's pulling good now, I think, yeah, you got him, okay, <laughs> all right, <laughs> there you go, okay, I'm going to get that other rod out of the way, we don't know how big this guy is yet, let me grab the, the front one, uh, a little, oh, no. more, little more drag on him, that might be not that bad of a fish. Helt sanslöst. Det är så styrka i den här fisken. Jørgen har i sitt liv fanget många arter och han har fanget många stora fisk. Han visste på förhand att störren är en stark fisk men er alligevel dybt overrasket over fiskens styrke. To see one of these fish is uh, like a dream for me. Altså, hvilke er varelser, altså? Hvilke fisker? Det er en av sånne førhistoriske fisk, det her. The uh, scanning measuring. This is all part of our scientific study that we're doing with these guys. The 20% recapture rate. So the first thing we do is we, we Scan this fish to see if he's been previously tagged. And he is. Okay. You see that? So this fish has been caught at least one other time. Oh, yeah. And uh, we have a database we can actually phone in. We can find out when, where, on how big he's grown. Okay. So it's really a nice program. So, okay. so this, this fish has already been caught before? He's been caught at least once before by one of our taggers. You put a small microchip or yeah. something inside his, yeah. his back. If this fish was not tagged, we would run this little electronic tag. We'd use a hypodermic needle, and we would punch that in just to the back of the bony platelet here, just under the skin surface, and that tag will stay in this fish for 150 years. And every time he's caught by one of our taggers who has a scanner, he would run that over there, just like we did there. And there you go. 422 D O one six nine O. B. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're also going to measure that fish and uh, we can compare that to when he was previously tagged and how much he's grown, have both you, in length and in girth. Have, where do you measure? The, the fork? Or the, way, the... the way we do it, in the United States they measure this fish to the, for the very tip of the tail. Yeah, in Canada we measure to the fork. Yeah. So I'm going to hold it on the very tip of the nose here and I'm going to run down and just to where the fork is there. 170. 170 is the fork length. That's and quite a nice start. It 170 is a, centimeter fish. Yeah. It I'm is pleased a, with that. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, watch the tail. There he goes. Woo! <laughs> We have a tagging program that's very successful. That's how we've been able to assess and monitor this uh, population of sturgeon. And it's a huge success story, this tagging program. We've got almost 20,000 sturgeon tagged in the Fraser River right now. Unbelievable. Yeah. How many years have you spent tagging and, and uh, investigation the population of the sturgeon? Just a little over four years. There's been a number of tagging programs, but our specific tagging program has been over a four-year period. And we're getting very close to the 20,000 uh, number right now and a lot of recaptures, and it's really nice to say that the, a lot of those fish that we're recapturing are doing very well, they're, they're still very grow. healthy. Yeah, putting on weight. They're putting on weight, they look good. I mean, I think we're exercising them just about the right amount, and yeah. uh, they look pretty healthy. But we've actually caught sturgeon with our tagging program that have been originally uh, tagged in the Columbia system. So they've moved out of the Columbia, up the coast, and into the Fraser River. How far have this fish traveled? Over 500 miles. Unbelievable. It is unbelievable. But it tells you a lot about the species, their ability to migrate, move, go to river systems where they like it, and stay there if they feel that, you know, the two things that make them move are, are food and sex drive. 
and uh, they obviously have an ability to move huge distances. So there's been about eight years of tagging on the Fraser River. So what is the, the conclusions uh, you've made thanks to the tagging program? And what we've been able to do is, with our tagging program, get enough tags on the population that we've actually been able to prove that we are on a recovering basis. We've actually increased our population over four years by about 20,000 fish. You, you can see that the, the yes. population is, is growing. It is growing and it's due to the catch and release. First Nations are, uh, uh, and commercial fishermen are now not taking those fish. And it's just a wonderful success story to see that the population is coming back. So uh, wh why and when did you start this tagging program? What happened was uh, a few years ago we had a, a couple of incidences where we had extremely low water uh, on the Fraser River two summers back to back and the water temperatures got really high and some unusual things happened and we had a lot of big sturgeon. We're talking 8 to 10 foot fish and uh, 30 to 40 fish each year showed up dead and everybody hit the panic button. All the sturgeon were dying, pollution, environment, uh, they didn't really know. And so an investigation was set forth and they, uh, through the process of elimination, they tried to determine how these fish died. They didn't really actually figure it out, but they actually suspected what happened was is these big fish, all of them were full of sockeye salmon. We're talking five to ten pound fish. These fish were full of them, and what they thought perhaps was the bacteria in the sockeye got so out of control with the warm temperatures that the fish actually died of food poisoning. Okay. Now the good thing about that is, is uh, that has not happened in the last 10 or 12 years, but what it did is it, it brought the awareness of sturgeon to a high level. It got a little bit political, and uh, money was generated to embark on a couple tagging programs. <laughs> Vi tager linerne ind for at sejle op til en plads, hvor flere af de andre både har fanget mange større inden for den sidste halve time. Nogle gange finder man et lille område, hvor mange fisk har koncentreret sig, og så kan der gøres meget fine fangster på ganske kort tid. See their eyes. Their eyes are this is like quite uh, small. So. Yeah, they don't really have great vision. Yeah, these these are the barbels. This is what these guys use to very sensitive. Very sensitive. And then this is this is what these guys are about. These are bottom feeding fish. That little Hoover there, he can he can pull that out quite a ways. Alrighty, I'll stay to the inside of you. Ja, der er Man ligger altid for anker, når der fiskes efter større. For at holde båden lige i strømmen, så den ikke ligger og svinger med linerne ude, benytter alle bådene en eller anden form for drivanker. Når man har lagt sig på et nyt spot, går der som regel et lille stykke tid, inden den første fisk hugger. Støren har en formidabel lugtesans, der på et eller andet tidspunkt vil lukke den op til vores lækre lakserovn. Fred fortæller, at netop denne plads har været et hotspot i den seneste tid. For blot to dage siden fik de her en fisk på 2 meter og 15.
Come on here, okay. you little. Let's see if we can get this guy to jump. Come on. You guys are right close, eh, Murray? Yeah. I think we might be seeing you later. Det er stor fisk det her, og den begynder at gå over mod de andres linjer. Op med ankeret og ud på mere åbent vand. Fisken går sine egne veje, og Kim har ikke en chance for at flytte den, selv når han lægger hele sin vægt og alle sine kræfter i. Den kan være så stor, som man, som man slet ikke fatter det. Altså. Der er nu gået over 20 minutter, og vi har overhovedet ikke set fisken endnu. Sejl fisken til land. <laughs> det er bare for vildt der. <laughs> da støren er helt udtrætte, lader den så roligt buksere til land, hvor vi chokeret kan tage den nærmere kig på den enorme fisk. Fat, altså en fisk på 2 meter og 35, det er aldrig drømt om hele mit liv, jeg skulle fange altså. Fisken bliver mærket med en mikrochip, og i et særligt schema kan vi gå ind og se den anslåede vægt, når vi har fiskens længde og omkreds. Kims større vejer omkring 110 kg. Måske mere. Den er i god stand. Men dagen er ikke slut endnu, og pladsen, hvor vi lå her til sidst, viser sig bare at være det helt store hotspot netop nu. I næsten en halv time har Markus fejtet med en fisk, som viser sig at være endnu større end Kims fisk. Også den større lader sig roligt buksere til land, da den er udtrættet. Fisken måler 243 cm og har en anslået vægt på mindst 120 kg. So how old do you reckon this sturgeon can get? Well, that's a very good question. You know, when we first started playing with these fish, we didn't realize how how slow growing these fish were and how old they can uh, they can get to. But uh, we believe that these fish will live to at least 150 years of age, with maybe a potential of living to 200 years. Now, not all of them make it, of course, but uh, you know, if you get uh, say a, a six foot fish, it's probably in around 50, 60 years of age. And uh, you know, if you get a fish, I have a picture actually here of a fairly large fish. This here is, uh, this is an 11 foot fish. And it was estimated that fish is 135 years of age. So they get bigger than that. Unbelievable. Uh, 14, 15 feet. Unbelievable so it's a fish. Huge fish. 
<clears throat> some of the fish we're gonna catch here is probably twice as old as we are. Yes, well, I'm 27, um, so that's probably pretty accurate. Yeah. yeah, that's right. We can catch fish that are going to be 75 to 100 years of age on your trip. Unbelievable. Det är så spännande att bara ligga här så ser man ett litet, litet napp på spöret och så tar det och så... Så är det liksom fullt. Vi är midt i ett av de stora skovhugstområder. Det ser vi flera steder, hvor enorme mængder af tømmer udskibes fra de specielle havne, der ligger langs flodbredden. Det är en stor fisk. Det här är grejer alltså kan jag säga. Jag känner det var en bra fisk direkt. Krack i den här fisken från första sekunden. Ska jag så veta vilken kraft det är? Alltså, man ska ju veta hur hårt snäll slirbromsen är också. Man kan ju inte dra ut det för hand bara. Så jag, jag får in linan när han simmar mot mig, så ja, enkelt ja. är det bara. Annars så är det inget snack om en som bestämmer. Ska jag fan om inte var skönt. Det ska göra ont, och det gör det. Detta fiske, det är krig. Här kommer han. Kom igen, kom igen, kom igen. Uff, kolla, 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 kolla. Vilken sögen. Vilken sögen alltså. I det här klara vattnet. Helt ofattbart. Kolla, 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 kolla vilken sögen. Kolla. Jesus. Det är som hajen alltså. Jörgens stora fascination av disse fisk smitter av på oss alla. Det är en fiskeart där inte har ändrat sig väsentligt i de sista 180 miljoner år. Ett förtidsmonster. Ett örtidsmonster. We have two waters to fish here, actually. It's the Fraser and the Harrison River. What's the difference between these two, two, two rivers? Well, the Fraser River is a massive system. It's uh, 1,600 kilometers long, and it has a number of tributaries that run into to make up that body of water. The Harrison is a, a river system that enters the Fraser right around Chilliwack. 
which is where we are living. Uh, it comes out of Harrison Lake, so you have this 45 mile long lake, which is like a big settling basin. And then for about 10 to 12 miles, that Harrison River comes out of Harrison Lake, and so the water is very clear. You can see at times 15 to 20 feet into the water. Uh, right now we've got about 7 feet of visibility, but it's very clear in comparison to the Fraser. The Fraser is generally a very muddy river. It runs through a lot of valleys with sand and there's a lot of sediment that moves around. So you'll see a marked difference between the Harrison clear water and the Fraser, which is muddy water. What about fishing? Are there any difference if you compare Harrison to the Fraser fish-wise? Uh, both fish very well. Both have big fish. The Fraser will have more fish, uh, more variety of sizes. The Harrison tends to be uh, a little bit, maybe not as many fish, but uh, generally on the average bigger fish. You said the smaller fish in the Fraser, but there's big fish in both of the river. There's big fish in, in both the Harrison and Fraser rivers. What happens with the Harrison is in the fall, there's, a, there's millions of salmon that come into the Harrison. And the sturgeon know that. So they'll come out of Harrison Lake, they'll come out of the Fraser, and they'll, they'll hang around and feast on salmon eggs and salmon parts. The Fraser River is a huge habitat of juvenile rearing uh, side channels. It's just a very complex ecosystem. And so that is like our little nest egg of where the sturgeon spawn, so baby sturgeon are made. So the Fraser seems to, to suit the sturgeon better, spawning and feeding. Yes, we do not believe that sturgeon spawn in the Harrison River, and that's probably why we don't see a lot of the juvenile population in the Harrison. Fantastisk sejltur ind i sideelvene bringer os frem til en ægte vildmarksnatur. Fugle og dyr samles omkring de døde laks, der er gyde her i løbet af efteråret. Salerne er svømmet de 100 km ude fra havet, helt heroppe, for at deltage i ædegillet på laks. Vores fiskeeventyr fortsætter. Her har Jesper kroget en stor stør, som han fighter med i mere end en halv time. Det er typisk for alle de større vi fanger, at de fejder benhårdt lige indtil de er helt udtrættede. Det er meget let at håndtere de nærmest skikkelige fisk, når man er kommet til land med dem. Her er endnu en fisk på omkring 100 kilo. Hver eneste fight med disse fantastiske fisk er et lille drama.
at fejde med disse fisk kan sammenlignes med big game fiskeri efter sailfish og marlin. Fiskene springer og er urstærke. Under fejden skal man simpelthen lægge alle kræfter i, og man er fysisk udmattet, når man endelig kan buksere den udtrættede fisk til land. Fiskeriet er naturligvis ikke en lang fejt med store fisk hele tiden. Der er også meget ventetid mellem hugne. Men lige nu er der tydeligvis en hugperiode. Her fanger endnu en deltager sit livs fisk. Nogle af fiskene går blot tungt og dybt under fejten, mens andre eksploderer i vilde lange udløb, lige fra starten. Det er ikke altid de største fester, der giver de mest fantastiske fejder. Det fik Jørgen et godt bevis på en sen eftermiddag, da tiden pludselig stod stille. Very fat fish. Mm. 
større end knap 2 meter lang og 91 cm om livet. 91. Vilka fiskar det är? Det är helt makalöst. Det är Den är tjock som en tunna den här fisken. Och vilka fighters. Vi er i november måned, og det bliver mørkt ved femtiden. Der er altså nogle gode lange aftener, som jo blandt andet kan bruges til shoppingtur i den lokale grejbutik. Vi er midt i et område, hvor der er store muligheder for mange slags fiskeri. Fra midten af sommeren til november er der opgang af alle fem arter stillehavslaks, og i det tidlige forår er der stilhat i elven. Derudover er der masser af godt fiskeri efter ørder i både elven, de tilhørende bække og de mange søer. Der er altså masser af forskellige grej, som også afspejler lokale fiskemetoder. Og lige det med at finde nyt specielt grej, er vist noget, der tænder en hver lystfisker. fish are there swimming in this enormous amount of water you can see here? Well, it's not unusual to see uh, fish that are 10 foot plus, but we do know that there's fish probably up to 15 feet still in the Fraser system. So there's definitely some really, really, really huge fish swimming around this water. The next time the rod tip goes like that, it, it could can be, be, a ten, anything, could yeah. be a 10 or 12 yeah. foot fish, honestly. Unbelievable. Yeah. It's exciting stuff. Vi sidder tørt og lunt med regn, der trummer hyggeligt på taget af kahytten. Regnen har faktisk positiv indflydelse på fiskeriet. Elven stiger, og fødeemner flyttes rundt. I båden ved siden af har Lars i længere tid kæmpet med en stor fisk. Endnu har vi ingen anelse om, hvor stor den egentlig er. Og så får Jørgen fisk på. I mellemtiden har Lars fået bukseret sin fisk til land. Det er en fantastisk fisk. Ja, fisken er 272 cm lang og anslås til at veje mellem 230 og 250 kg. Ja, vi øh, står på øh, 250 kg. 
It ain't coming up much higher than that. <laughs> Det er en imponerende fisk, som er i meget fin stand og god kondition. Den sprang faktisk tre gange ud af vandet under fejten, fortæller Lars. Meget godt klaret af en fisk, der formentlig er 80-90 år gammel. So how big fish have you caught or seen in this river? We've caught a lot of big fish, a lot of fish over 500 pounds, but the biggest fish, which is a very important fish for me, was a 12 and a half footer that my brother and I caught uh, over close to 30 years ago now. And that fish was a fish that we killed. And it was uh, estimated to be 900 pounds. It had 165 pounds of eggs, caviar, or potential baby sturgeon in it, an estimated 10 to 12 million eggs in that fish. Unbelievable. It was an unbelievable fish. I mean, I was brought up that we caught fish and we, we took them to Vancouver and we sold them in the marketplace. And this fish, uh, you know, at, assessed at maybe close to 150 years of age, would have probably spawned within a couple months of us killing that fish. So for me, it was a real eye-opener and it changed my whole uh, thinking about sturgeon because that certainly had an impact to me and it certainly had an impact to this resource. So uh, right after that we started talking about catch and release in a very serious way. So actually you caught this huge fish on rod and reel? Oh yes, I mean we'd caught a lot of big fish but we'd never caught a fish that size with that much power and you know three hours into the evening we fought this thing but we knew how big it was because when we hooked it it stood right on its tail. So this huge fish was jumping? It was jumping oh, and it, it basically uh, kind of swam around the river for three hours. It actually, what happened during the fight, it actually decided to go upstream and it towed the boat, we turned the boat off and the motor off on the boat and it towed us upstream for a, close to an hour and I think that's what tired that fish out. We kind of just sat on the rod and let the fish tow us upstream for quite a while. How big were your boats? It was a 16 footer and uh, <laughs> fiberglass, so you know, uh, pulling it backwards up the Fraser River, I just, you can't imagine the power of that fish. How did you handle this huge fish? Well, we towed it back to the boat ramp, and it's a pretty ironic story. We got back to the boat ramp, and we'd taken a little Mazda truck as how we got to the boat ramp. So we decided we we're going to try to get this huge fish into the Mazda truck, which uh, after a little while we realized it was completely futile. This fish's head is on the tailgate, and this huge fish is laying out the back, and there's no <laughs> way it would have fit into the truck anyways. So we went and got a bigger truck, a chain block, and my father, who caught lots of big fish, who was going to help us out, and when he saw that fish, he said that was the biggest sturgeon he'd ever seen in his life. So this fish is a 12 and a half foot fish from nose to tip of tail. And the uh, circumference of this fish was, uh, was uh, close to seven feet around. Unbelievable. Yeah, just a huge fish. Looks more like a shark or something. It's uh, unbelievable, the size of the fish, it's mind blowing. When you see a fish like that jumping out of the water, it, uh, it looks about three times as big as it actually is, and it is breathtaking. Den sidste dag kommer Jørgen til at opleve en af de mest fantastiske fight-oplevelser på turen.
fastna. Linan hade liksom skurit in. Det var löst pålagt. Fantastiskt. It's my, I think it's my normal size fish. Yeah, your around, six, around, six half, around yeah. two meter. Okay. Men så speciella, fullständigt annorlunda. Läknar liksom ingenting. Det är verkligen en förtidsfisk, liksom. Perfect, so it's going to the blade. 